This is Heron Addiction, presented by That Time I Got Reincarnated in the Same World as an Anime Podcaster, where we cover romance and drama manhwa and where things can only get worse. I'm Isekai Sensei Sama, aka Brad, and as always, I'm joined by Bento Baggins, aka Ben. Hello. Be sure to find us on social media, which you can find links for on our website, animepodcastreincarnation.com. I imagine after this episode, Lots of people will have things they want to say to us. Maybe. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping they applaud. Because, like, this is the first time I've ever, like, been in solid agreement with the Bato comments. So today we're, we're doing something special. Um, if you've listened to the previous episodes, you know that we are doing three different series today, which I am calling savor the scorned villainous on the emperor's lap. (laughs) Somebody's going to make that series. Well, it it would certainly be better than half of what we've read here. (laughs) So yeah, we, uh, we've, had a selection of three different uh, not so good manhwa uh, as chosen by our patrons. Um, out of out of nine possibilities, and um, I'm I'm thinking that the 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 top three or four that were uh, on our list uh, originally probably shouldn't have been there. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we'll get into that. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go best to worst um, as there will be more and more to say as things get worse. Yep. Yep. So uh, spoiler alert, uh, we're going to start with Savor the Taste, which, uh, yeah, I think we're all in agreement. Probably shouldn't have been in this episode. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have been in this episode. Shouldn't have started with it. I started reading Savor the Taste, and I was like, ah, oh, this is... It, it's cute. I mean, it, it's it's almost a gag comic. Yeah. And so the, the, the simple plot is there's an emperor who's cursed. Or not... I don't know if he's emperor. I don't know anybody's political titles. But there's a guy who's cursed. He can't taste anything. But when... This uh, reincarnated lady cooks for him. He can, he can taste the food. So, th- this is definitely a, a very uh, limited manhwa. There's only fifty nine chapters, um, and I'll I'll read the summary here, um, <laughs> which is very short. <laughs> okay. Can a princess's food save a kingdom? Luna is reborn as an illegitimate princess inside a book. Resigned to her fate, she decides to spend her days cooking. Not long after, the cursed Duke Legion arrives and sacks the kingdom. But instead of falling for the princess, he's bewitched by Luna's food. He orders her cook. He orders her to cook for him or die. That's it. That's all. That's all the information it, you get. That's that's pretty much the thing. And then yeah, it has that's like true. A, it has a very web comic y overly complicated self indulgent wrap up <laughs> with like a lot of like drama from nowhere and it's I, I don't know what to say other than it's fine. It yeah, lasted it is, about as long as it could last. It it is I would call it aggressively fine. Um there <laughs> because it there there's a lot of uh waffling as far as I'm concerned, because there's, there's these, there's these good parts to it where it's like, Oh, she's cooking and they're falling in love and everything. But then you've got these other parts that are like bad and frustrating in that all of these men around her are awful. And like, 
just by its very nature, Duke Legion happens to be the best of all these terrible men. <laughs> and you can forgive him because he's terrible because of a curse. You know, <laughs> it's like. Yeah, I mean, uh, the romance, let's say the romance didn't work for me. The The thing that worked for me was the idea that, like, she could cook to save her life. Like, I, I guess the the parts that work are, like, the early parts mostly where he's, he wants to kill her, or he keeps threatening to kill her, but then she makes something and he's like, oh, I, I, it's all right. Yeah, it's fine. Go back. And then he's he's just like falling all over himself, like orgasming over how good the food is internally. And it's like, yeah. It's, you it's know what this series funny is? Funny joke. <laughs> this, this whole series is one of those Snickers commercials. You're, <laughs> you're not yourself you're not when, you you're, when hungry. you're hungry. Because <laughs> he's constantly like he's he's so bad and evil. And then he eats her food, which he, he, it, he doesn't immediately, you know, find disgusting. And suddenly he's better nourished and isn't a mean person anymore. Yeah. I mean, like, if we were doing a whole episode on this, there's a lot of things we could like nitty gritty stuff we could get into. Like, you know me, I don't like I don't like it when names are wrong. His name is Legion. It's yeah. not a name. In fact, it's like one of the only demons named in the Bible. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, so it is a name. I uh, yeah. Well, I mean, he was saying we are Legion, meaning there are uh, many of us, but they capitalize it like it's a name. But yeah, it's a. It, it's fine. I don't know. Do you want to rubric through it already, or do you have like more? Because, like, most of my thoughts will come out in a rubric. Yeah, we'll definitely jump into the rubric shortly. Um, I just want to, I want everyone to be clear. Like, this is something that you could read quickly and you, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a complete waste of time. Like, there is something you can get out of this, a, a, a little bit of light entertainment. No, this is fine. It, it's literally fine. It doesn't yeah. belong here. That's why I don't want to spend a ton of time on it. I have a lot to say about the other two. <laughs> <laughs> nobody should nobody should read this one when they have other better things to read. But when you've run out of those things, check this out. Look, I like I wouldn't pay for this. <laughs> but if it was a webcomic, I would read it. In computer lab in high school. Mm. So that that was kind of what I was getting out of it. Is like this is easily as good as every web comic I ever read for free. Would I would I buy the coins or the uh, Korea Land Fun Bucks, whatever you use to purchase these? <laughs> I no, I would it's not. Like is, uh, it's on Manta.net, which I had never heard of before. Um, but it looks like, you know, every other manhwa site. So like a lot of these are going to follow can, this. This is probably actually, I'm, I'm more on board with, with Manta.net because you get one free chapter every day. Oh, okay. So you can conceivably read this whole thing without paying. It'll yeah. just take you 59 days. Yeah, I mean, that's my thing with this is like, would I pay for it? No. Does it deserve to be mocked? No. It's it, it it all of these have in common the I feel like they were created by children. <laughs> and when I say children, understand I'm an old man and I could I mean people well into their teens. But I think this one was made by someone in their twenties. Possibly. But there's like the art's not great. The story is convoluted. But also, it's not taking itself deadly, deadly seriously. So that helps a lot with it. I did. I did. Uh, there's there's a main component of this that I didn't like, which was how accepting she was of just like the outcome of everything. Because 
there's definitely some Stockholm syndrome going on here. Like, I don't care that he's hungry and can't eat any food. Like (laughs) he's a murderer. He's a kidnapper. He's enslaved people. Like he's not a good person. And just because, Oh, he was cursed. And now he's nice to people because he's fed all the time is like, that doesn't excuse what you did. (laughs) No, no. And of course, the the emperor um, is like obviously the worst, and you know they portray him that way. So you know they have this is a an ongoing theme where it's like, oh, your male lead is not a great person. Well, we got to set up someone who's just like unequivocally evil <laughs> to to compare him to. <laughs> so it seems better. He can be redeemed by beating this guy who's worse. Right. Um, And of course, then there's the, uh, well, he didn't beat him, though. He just. Yeah. um, And then there's the other princess who is the original female lead of the story who, like, is a good person, but also, like, continues to fail or continues to to not recognize when she's talking to her sister that like her sister and her are not from the same world. (laughs) Like she keeps talking about like they (laughs) took our homeland and, and, and she's like, yeah, I was locked up in a place that was like no good before. Where were you then? (laughs) It's uh, I don't know. Do you think it's short? Cause it got canceled. Like, I don't, I don't think so. I if think it's short because there's you could you can't continue to drag it on. Yeah, I was gonna say if this is somebody's like little passion project, I'm willing to give it some slack on a lot of stuff. But yeah, again, I guess if if like a big corporate, I don't know if big corporation is the right word for these comic sites, but like <laughs> if a team of people came to the conclusion that this was the product they wanted to sell. I don't really understand that. (laughs) (laughs) What were you uh, thinking? Yeah. Um, So here's something interesting for you. Here's a bit of information. Okay. So this is uh, from a novel. So the original story is by Rue Ran. I think I'm saying that part correctly r-y-u-r-a-n um and then it was adapted there's two different people who adapted it uh and i don't know if they handed it over or they were working together the whole time um unsan and man all uppercase a m a n n (laughs) i will say like the last third is drawn noticeably better than well, but it was drawn by the same person the whole really? time. Really? They just got uh, better then. Good for them. Boboshu. Boboshu. Whatever that is. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think this this isn't like somebody's... I mean, maybe the original story is a teenager. Yeah. But, like, this was made into a manhwa by a team of people. Well, um... I'm gonna be. I'm gonna try to be generous here and say you gotta start somewhere. Uh, well, that's true. This is this is this is the training manga, or <laughs> the training comic for the for the young Otome Isekai uh, art team. The food looked good. I don't know if they just painted over photos or something, but I mean, probably. Yeah, the food was fine. <laughs> well, um, un- unless you have any more. Specific points you want to hit? We want to jump into the rubric? Rubric. All right, let's do it. Uh, I think we need to include romance for this one. Okay. Okay, so let's let's do the, the old content and ideas. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's see here. It is a toughie. You know what? I think for content, content and ideas, I'm going to give this a four. Yeah. 
yeah, you know what? Let, let's go ahead and do that. Cause it's... There, there's, there's obviously not a ton going on here, but like, I'm reading the description. Original ideas and plot points are presented and clearly developed. Character arcs are satisfying. I think it hits all those. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it it's good on paper. I like it. Yep. Uh, pacing and structure. Hmm. I'm going to go with a three. A three. Yeah. 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 yeah Cause it, it uh, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. And there's my main issue with it is there is a couple points where they sort of just go and then some things happened and now we're here and it's like, okay. I mean, we probably don't want to draw this stuff out, but you could have slowed that down a bit and maybe sped up some other things that dr- drug on too long. There's a, there's a whole point near, I would say the, the middle of the, the last quarter or so where they just go yada, yada, yada. She's a <laughs> witch and she's powerful and she knows everything now. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot to mention uh, the other horrible, horrible person. Speaking of characters, that male witch, he can just fuck right off. Uh, like, as much as he helped in the beginning, he's just awful. Like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, that was one of the points where I was like, oh, this is evolving in a weird... Like, he doesn't need to be there, Yeah, in my opinion. And I you know just... what? I thought we were going to get to the end and they were going to be like... He's actually her dad, and that's why he's so uh, crazy about what her relationships. And it was like, no, he's just a person who was like in love with her mom. He's just, oh, he's the Snape. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> he's the Snape of the story. Uh, so characters. Um, I'm, I'm between like a, a two and a three. I'm going to say three. I think three is fair. Because yeah. the the main characters have their arcs that they go through, even if they're a little underdeveloped, um, but they are there and mostly consistent in their their growth. Yeah, I mean, within the logic of the world, they they make sense, I guess. Um, what you're getting me is they they feel somewhat relatable and underdeveloped. I think mm-hmm. that's that's pretty much how I feel about it. Is like, yeah, uh, in the logic of the world, where like some, I mean, she's just kind of like ditzy and happy to cook, even though her life is on the line every time. And it's, it's, I don't really relate to that, but yeah, it's fine. I I'm, did. I'm going to use that a lot. It's, it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> I, I did have a bit of an issue with that whole characterization because like. They show that she's smart and capable, but then she does these things that are like, okay, a smart and capable person wouldn't be just like, oh, I, what's going on, you know, and yeah. which she does all the time. It's like, pick, is she smart and capable or is she a ditz? Like, which, she, which is it? She's very aware she's in a comedy comic. Yeah, right. <laughs> all right. So, romance. <laughs> I don't really get anything out of it. I um, I, I guess that goes along with like the the weird logic of the world. Like, I don't think I can go as low as two on this because, and and specifically, the pairings seem forced. We are told that the two characters fell in love rather than being shown how they fell in love. I think we were clearly shown how they fell in love. Okay. I'd, I'd say two just because I don't like the whole thing seems to be based on that phrase like the the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, it's, I, that's not working for me. But I think two is fair in so much as like it does feel forced. Yeah, that's where I'm. But we also clearly see like it feels forced. Because she's got Stockholm Syndrome. Not necessarily because it doesn't make sense that they fell in love. Well, it feels forced because, I don't know, they're they're kind of like, 
I feel like anybody who appreciated her cooking could have fallen for her yeah. in the same way. That's I don't know what's special about these two or why I should care. Like in this in up in this comic, I never care who she falls in love with. <laughs> yeah. Like there's there's other comics where I'm like what what was the one we just read where I was like, "No, it's Lucas." Yeah, who made me a princess. Yeah. So who made me a princess? I have strong opinions about where the chemistry is. Yeah. And in this, I just, I, I, yeah, he, he likes her cooking. She likes to cook. They can get along. I, I, I mean, they could be an arranged marriage and I would still be like, yeah, it, it'll probably work. I mean, this would be a prime candidate for uh, a, a half. So two and a half. Yeah. I, I, I don't hate it. I like so two, if, two implies I have strong feelings about it, but I don't. <laughs> So if you go two and I go three, that splits the difference. That works. <laughs> uh, art competency. I'm I'm gonna have to go straight down the middle with a three on this. No, that's what I went to. Uh, it it's okay. It, it's definitely not. It's not offensive. No, it's it's not so bad. I'm like this person is not trying. This person clearly cares whoever's drawing it and they're clearly taking time to get things right and try to make visually appealing images and uh, good character designs and things like that. Um, but you can tell they're, they're lacking a little bit in the skill department. And I say that in like, compared to me, no, they're, they're very skilled, but compared to like <laughs> somebody I would like compared to other professional artists, I would right. say. Yeah, I feel like this is done. this is on the low end of like good art. So it's like it's not bad. It's just there it's very clear that something isn't quite right. Yeah. Well, and I think they kind of knew their limits a little bit with this one, which if you're doing professional art, like especially if you're drawing someone else's story, then that's not the time to take big risks and try to do something you have no idea how to do. Like yeah. uh, say point a finger directly at the camera mm -hmm. and do a perspective. Um, <laughs> so this, this person doesn't take a lot of risks with the art. There's not a lot of dynamic poses. There's not a lot of like complicated lighting choices or anything like that. So you could tell they're holding back because they don't know how to do it. Yeah. And like I said, though, if it is the same artist the whole way through, there is clear improvement. Yeah. And I think that's worth something. Like, I don't think to me, a three is on the, the bottom end of the positive scores. Yeah. And I think this deserves a positive score, but big room for improvement. I think that's definitely fair. Um, artistic flourish. So, I want to give artistic flourish a two, but going by the, uh, the, the technical definitions here, I, I think it has to be a three. I guess with the no attempt is made, I will say that an attempt was made. I, I had two selected, but you're right. That might be harsh. Cause I did like the food. I did say that. I don't know yeah. if they just, painted over which is cheating by the way that's cheating well not but, in Monwa, it's not everybody does no it's that. it's cheating if you do that you're cheating i don't care there's, i don't care how you make art it's it's very clear that there's there's a lot of places in here where they just didn't make an effort but there are other places where they did and it's clear and like it does work there's just not yeah. a ton of it so no attempt is is not fair this is another one where I would be like, this is probably a 2.5. Um, oh, you've, you've talked me up to a three. I, I feel comfortable with a three. But I don't I don't think I can go down to a two. Yeah. And I, I don't think I would. Like, I, th this is this is a series where I want to be more generous because I feel relatively positive towards it. Yeah. And so, for personal preference, I'm going to give it a three generally also, positive toward the comic. <laughs> I also gave it a three. I enjoyed reading it. Yeah. I thought when I'll tell you my exact thought when I read this, I was like, 
disappointed because I wanted the bottom of the barrel. And I was like, okay, well, this just isn't like as well done as some of the other things we've read. Like who made me a princess? It, it, it's not like professional quality. That right. That's basically my whole thing is it's just not a professional quality manhwa. And if this had been a clear webcomic, like um, Isekai made that we read. Yeah. This would be like, oh my God, this is the best webcomic ever because there are clear professional touches to it. This is exactly the kind of webcomic I used to read. And I would definitely have checked this out as a kid and I would have kept reading it as long as it went. Would not pay for it. I, d- I don't think it's professional enough for me to pay for. Now, that's not to say I wouldn't like buy a t-shirt or donate to a Patreon or something, but like just to go to a, like a a comic book store and buy this. No, Mm -hmm. just to go to one of those microtransaction hell websites. No. Yes. If this was on one of the sites where I could, I was paying a subscription and I could just read like a whole bunch of stuff, I would probably read this. So technically I'm paying for it. The fact that it's on a site where you can read uh, one free chapter a day. This would go on the list of when I've run out of other things, I'll read this because it's, it's free. Like this is a, yeah, this is a great example of like the, the Kindle unlimited, like comiXology unlimited, like it crosses my path. Yeah. I, I have access to it. So like, yeah, I'll click it. And I think that there is a, a group of, of readers that, paying for this would make sense to for them. Well, and especially if you're like into creating manhwa, I mean, Lord knows we hang out with other indie podcasters who make unprofessional mistakes with audio <laughs> quality, like me and my giant squeaky chair. And, um, and I mean, but we'd never make a mistake, like, you know, not, actually recording the entire thing and having to use the backup emergency audio, which didn't have its level set correctly. That, I, that would never be anything that we would do. That's yeah, so like, unprofessional, especially while you have a, an important guest on like, can you imagine that, that idiot? When, when you, <laughs> when you're in, when, when you're making stuff, you have a lot more appreciation for other people who are just starting out making stuff. Like the, yeah. I did not listen to indie podcasts until I became an indie podcaster and I could appreciate everything that was going on in that podcast. And I genuinely like them. Like I genuinely listen to indie podcasts, not as a courtesy to somebody else in my same situation, but because I can appreciate it now. Mm hmm. And as somebody who did dabble in like web comics and stuff, I can appreciate where they're coming from with this and I would have read it. But if I have, you know, a $50 a month comic book budget, uh, this can't be one of them, but yeah. Well, I'm going to continue our trend recommendation strength. I'm going with a three. Yeah. That's basically what I just described. <laughs> It's, I'm telling you, if you read it, I don't think you'll have a bad time. But if it is competing for your time, it might lose. This is this is definitely one of the ones that where, you know, we we talk with the people on the Otomi Isekai Discord, and they are just scrambling for things to read because they read through you know seventy chapter something that's seventy chapters long in a single day. And they're just starved for content. Yeah, they should definitely go read this. <laughs> oh my. Well, okay. So that is all the categories. And that puts me at 59. I was at 56. Yeah. Which means we have rated it lower than it is rated. <laughs> Hell yeah. Which, uh, I mean, that's how this stuff goes. I honestly thought that we might actually get close on this one. Um, but What's yeah, I think rated? that's a solid six. 7.3. Yeah, I think that, I do think that's too high. 
I'm okay rating it lower than that. I think on the scale of how do I feel about this that everyone else rates it on rates it on instead of our very scientific rubric. Um, I think I think a seven is probably fair, but uh, you know mm. now we see that objectively speaking, it's a six. So. I'd have probably rated it a six on the preference scale. Would like general like positive but barely. Um, when I, before we started doing, you know, scientific rubriking, um, six was definitely my, like, I don't like this, but I'm going to keep reading it number. And so did anything it, ever get below? Oh yeah. I've definitely got some stuff that's, um, when I hit five, it was like, this stays on the, you know, on hold list, but it's right on the line. And there's a, was anything, there's a couple was anything that I rated ever a five. Four? No, I never, I never got that low. Damn it. <laughs> I was like, as if there was a four, we need to be reading that. <laughs> so stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed to our feed because Carmen and I recorded a Shonen Jumping the Gun last night, which <gasps> is going to come out in like three months um, Did you? for a, a new series in, in Shonen Jump. And Do you I was not impressed to say oh the my least. god <laughs> it's happening <laughs> we did it kermit <laughs> it, it it was it was probably definitely well we still got two more series to get through on this episode so let's <laughs> let's temper that a bit we'll see where we're at <laughs> maybe, we can, maybe we can have an early christmas uh, uh so yeah i mean that's that's savor the taste is there is there anything more to say than like now let's move on to an acorn villainous is found in the wilderness. <laughs> I don't uh, know why this title did not stick with me at all. I have never been able to remember it. I just keep well, Googling scorned villainous wilderness yeah, and let, it always comes up. Let's be fair. The title doesn't make a whole lot of sense anyway, because they're like, oh, in the wilderness, it's like she lives in a town. In, in fact, she lives in a mansion in a town. The only reason it's the wilderness is because it's like far away from the capital or whatever. Yeah, I like, think they meant like the country. Maybe or like the. What are some of the alternate titles here? Oh, no. Alternate English titles. One of these titles has slow life in English. I think that's. I don't even know what language that is. That's. No country for old villainesses. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The old villainous in the sea. Well, I'll uh I'll read the summary here and then we'll get into it. <clears throat> the Crown Prince Wilhelm suddenly announced the dissolvement of his betrothal to Constance Connie, the daughter of a marquis. It seems like he had fallen in love with someone else, a saint who had appeared recently. Connie grew depressed at the cruel declaration, as she had spent the past two years acting as his consort. But one day her memory returned and she realized that she had been reincarnated as the villainous in a romance novel. Whatever, I don't need a cheater with the option to become a villainous. Whatever that means. I'll live on as the leader of my land. This is Connie's story of how she lives her life with strength in the borderlands, far away from the capital. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. Um, you want like my general thought on this? Sure. This has big like. I definitely have sex energy. <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> if this was not written by an actual child, I don't know what this person's deal is. I know what sex is because I have it all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is. <laughs> uh... <laughs> uh, yeah. Hold on. Let's let's check here. Okay. So this is on Pocket Comics. <clears throat> and Pocket Comics says uh, original creator. So an adaptation. Uh, on Yoshi. 
And then the creators of the manhwa, Ruri Nakon Nakono and Sora Jima. So I believe that's a um, written by and those are Japanese oh, names. Hi. Is this a manhwa? Oh, no, the studio is Sora Jima. Sorry. Ah. So just one person is, I guess, adapting it. Rory. Yeah, I, I, uh, so the deal is there's, there's the villainous who's the reincarnated one, obviously the saint lady is the actual villain and she just has all the sex. She's, she's a sex addict <laughs> and she steals everybody's boyfriend and she enchants all of them and, and all this stuff. And it's, it's just like, I compared it to a uh, misery business by Paramore <laughs> where she's telling that girl, like the, she got the guy and he's way happier with her and you're just a whore, nothing more. That'll never change. And like, you know, Haley Williams now, Haley Williams is my age. She's like, yeah, I don't, I mean, I wrote that song when I was 17. It was from my diary and I, uh, I don't really stand by it, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> I might have been just like a bit too dramatic for the, uh, the actual situation that was going on. That's what this feels like. It feels like somebody, somebody did not like the popular girl who got all the guys and just wanted to call her a whore <laughs> over and over and over and over again. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. So I did not reread this one for this. I read this back when it was still coming out. Um, and it ended a little less than a year ago. And my experience with this was I really needed to see the villainous get killed. Or rather, the saint get killed. And so yeah. the only reason that I continued to read this, because it's so frustrating, is because I needed to see that resolution. And also it was fun to trash it in the comments. Yeah. That, like I said, this is one where I was like, I was 100% with the Bato comments. You are like, you were saying like, oh, we might be doing some controversial stuff here today. But as near as I can tell, the community is right with us on this. <laughs> like, I just, this villainous sucks or, or the the saint sucks obviously but the more i read it the more i was just getting skeptical of the author self-insert character yeah because i was like i don't believe the saint exists like i don't believe this person is real i feel like i'm i feel like you're telling me a very skewed one-sided story about a girl so, you don't like <laughs> i i do want to be fair to the author because the trope of, oh, I'm the villainous in this game or novel, and the uh, the original uh, female lead is also someone who got my uh, transmigrated or reincarnated, and they know it's a game, and because they know it's a game, they think that they can just do whatever, and that you know people's lives are just there for their entertainment and they're going to be a terrible person and, and try and take things over. But I'm the villainous and, but I'm also reincarnated. So I have the perspective that like what's going on. So I'm changing things and then they get all pissed off because I'm not following the story. Like that's a thing that happens in a lot of different uh, stories like this. So, so what you're saying is I don't have to give it points for being original. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> um, so I mentioned that I was only reading this so I could get the comeuppance, right? Of of the prince and the, the saintess, right? Yep. Spoilers. It was not satisfying at all. The ending of this was so anticlimactic, especially the crown prince. The, the, the way that he dies is like, 
Oh my god, it was terrible. Um, so I have a confession. I didn't make it to the end of this one. I was so, just like, right, I made well, it most I'll, of the way, like two thirds. I'll I'll spoil this for everybody then. So yeah, the uh, the crown prince dies. He uh, there's there's a rebellion right down in the south. And we actually find out that the rebellion was sort of instigated by Connie's like right hand man assistant guy in her territory. Who's like the smart one who is actually the one who's doing everything. And Connie is terrible, by the way. Um, And so the crown prince gets sent to deal with this rebellion because he has already been sort of like stripped of his crown prince title he's not actually the crown prince anymore but they're still like you need to do stuff for your country so people you know don't hate us so you go deal with this rebellion he goes down there and he just gets shot in the head with an arrow (laughs) he's just he's just down there they're like hey there's a rebellion going on somebody up on a roof shoots him in the head with an arrow like a sniper and as he's dying he just has this last thought of like Maybe I was bad to Connie and then he dies. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me right now? After See, that's, 80 chapters and that's what you're going to do to end that's, it. That's why I say it feels like it was written by a child. Like it feels like it was written by a teenager who just like is not happy with the, the clicks at their school. <laughs> Because, like, obviously the last thought my enemies would think as they're dying is they should have been nicer to me. Like, I I just, that's why I did not get very far with this one. Like, (laughs) it's, it's just constantly, like, pity me, pity me, pity me. Everybody's so mean to me. I don't have nice things. And then like, there's the one knight who's like, who's like, don't worry. I would never, I would never, I would never cheat on you with her because anybody, I read her file and anybody who would act like that is clearly a sex addicted freak. And I'm like, oh my God. I want to be fair because he is the best character across all three of these (laughs) series. Like, yeah, <laughs> he's the only one that I'm like, yeah, he's a good guy. Everybody else is awful. Yeah, it's just I don't. This is not how people talk. Yeah. And I know translation, whatever. I'm sure it's not well translated. That's another thing with all of these. But <laughs> it, it's like, no, he didn't say that. No, he didn't say that. And, and it's like, no, she didn't say that. No, this is just you ranting. This is just the author ranting. I can't suspend disbelief. I'm sorry. The thing is like with, with a series like this, the, the crux of whether or not you're actually invested in the story is if you can relate to the main character and, or, or at least feel for them. Right. And at no point after the beginning of this story, did I ever feel any kind of attachment to Connie? She was just being pulled along by the people around her. And they keep talking about like, you need to have more confidence because you're strong and smart and you're great. And at no point did they ever show how she was strong or smart or great. They're literally just telling you that she's constantly, uh, going along with the plans of her, of her assistant who is the only smart person in this entire thing. Um, uh, the the I, knight falls in love with her because he's her knight. Like they, they don't show any kind of like, why did they get attached? Oh, she's nice to him. That that's why. So he falls like what? There's no, there's no attraction there besides, Oh, I guess they're both pretty. <laughs> I thought we had something, something going when, she gets um like, like she's not affected by the the 
magical blight or miasma or whatever, as much as everybody else. And like, maybe she has saintly powers, but like, right. and then everybody's telling her like, well, the thing that makes you special isn't necessarily that you're capable, but that you care about people that, <laughs> that you are, are the one noble who's going to like take the best interests of the people. And I'm like, eh. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's good. We're going somewhere. And then it's just like the saintess comes and she's like terrible and impossibly evil. And there's a whole thing about they don't eat the you don't eat your meat. How can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? And like there, there's a lot of this series that sort of feels like stream of consciousness writing. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's like, oh, okay, and then this happened. Oh, what's going to happen next? Oh, okay, then this will happen next. And it's just like, you didn't plan this out, did you? You didn't think about what do you want your whole story to be. You just started writing. No, like all the, all the, I mean, I always pick on the politics and the, the European um, etiquette and stuff that they get wrong. But like this one was just, she's just making stuff up. <laughs> like. So I don't know. as terrible as all of this is, I keep reading because the Saintess is by far the worst, which is saying a lot. They really do set her up as just the worst person. And so you're reading it going, all right, I want to see this bitch get got, right? Okay. Yeah. That I need to get to the end because I need to see her get murdered in the most horrible way possible. And so we go and you get to a point where it's like, okay, everybody knows that the Saintess is terrible now. They've locked her up. Oh, but they're keeping her alive because there's still miasma in places and they can't really like just kill her because they still need her power. Right. And then they're like, okay, we got rid of the last of the miasma. It's not a thing anymore. We don't know what else ever can clear the miasma. Is that that's so frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, oh, the, all the miasma is gone. And then it's like, oh, she actually lost her powers. God took her powers from her because there's no more miasma. She literally has no more worth in the world. And so everybody's like, oh, okay, cool. Let's execute her now. And then they just cut off her head and that's it. No fanfare, no like last ditch attempt like she runs a, like there's a couple people who are like on her side and she they like let her out of prison and there's a whole escape scene and like oh then she there's a fight in the wood no literally just like oh there's the guillotine she's dead that was it i'm gonna, I'm gonna give the like, author i'm gonna give the author some personal advice it might be you <laughs> i i think it might be you whatever problems you're having that caused you to write this just work on yourself, you know, just, you just go like, go for a jog, read a book, get a hobby. Uh, you know, don't worry about what the saint's doing. Let the saint be the saint and you just do you. Okay. Uh, no, this one just, it was just too uh, uh, cringy. I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, cause you don't do that the way I do. Like you don't imagine the author the way no. I do. <laughs> yeah. I just felt like I was seeing right through this to like you are like this author is a person who is creating their own problems <laughs> out of, out of all three of these series, this one, I will, I I'm definitely on, on your side of like, this was written by an angsty teenager. Yeah. Uh, and it was drawn by clip art. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Do it. I mean, we'll get to this in the art thing, but do we want to talk about the copy pasted fire on a copy pasted wooden floor in a copy pasted tent (laughs) (sighs) with no ventilation? (laughs) See, my theory is she suffocated in that tent in like chapter 10 and the rest of it was just her like her coma dream. Yeah, that's fair. (laughs) We, we should probably just get into the rubric on this. Um, yeah. There is one last thing that I wanted to, to point out story-wise, which was, I think, maybe the best part, like the most realistic and well uh, put together story aspect of this, which is 
after the crown prince gets like uh disinherited or whatever the heck happened to him um the his younger brother becomes the crown prince and they're at a banquet and like he comes up to Connie and is like hey so you went through all the queen training and everything and you're like awesome and everything which she's not um uh, you should come back and be my uh get engaged to me and she's like yeah no i'm not going to do that cuz like everybody treated me like shit even though you know i didn't do anything wrong and i was like hey that's cool because i could see this going the way where it's like oh she's going to become queen again because like that's the powerful position and that's what the dream is is to be in charge of everybody right but she was like, nope, I'm going to stay living out in the countryside and I'm going to marry my knight and we're just going to have a good time out in our territory. And I was like, that's cool. Yeah, good for you. I that was the, the smartest decision you've made. I can't go back now because I've already got all this villainous in the wilderness brand merchandise. <laughs> and if I go back, I'm just going to have to, like, re what, re-trademark? I'm not filing that again. Um, yeah, so yeah, let's rubric this. Um, I will, uh, I will say ahead of time, this is rated at a five. I think we can beat that. We might, we, we very well may. <laughs> that said, we'll I think five is, is a fair score from the community. Yeah, we'll see. I'm going to lean on you for content and ideas because I did not finish this and I don't usually like to rate something I haven't finished. But could you tell me, like, what is the plot? The what plot are we doing is here? the Saintess is a bitch. Okay. That's what the plot is. And this is super, <laughs> so, this so is like super unfortunate. <laughs> I, for content and ideas, I, I have to give it a three. Because okay. all of the major, all of the plot points are developed. Like they, they didn't introduce any side stuff that you go, Oh, what's going on there? And then they never resolve it. So like, yeah, it's not good. So the, the plot is <laughs> this, the, the saint is mean. She deserves to die. And uh, the, okay. So the plot is everybody thinks the saint is cool, but she's actually mean and she deserves to die and for everybody to find out that she was mean and that happens the end. Yeah. Uh, man, the rubric was not built for this. No, uh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry. Uh, we'll, we'll get worse from here. Um, I, I'm going to, Oh boy. Okay. Three. We'll go three. I, I suppose oh, we do have to include romance here. Yeah, no, no, we're including romance. Um, so, but pacing and structure, I'm going to, um, the story can be understood, but the pacing is still uncomfortable. That is definitely how I would <laughs> describe it is uncomfortable. <laughs> I actually went with a one cause I'm saying yeah. the pacing is, I'm saying the pacing is so slow. It affects my ability to even know what the plot is. I thought the plot was going to be she becomes like a woman of the people and she did that. Yeah. But like, and that's like the focus of the story, but then it, it wasn't the focus of the story. <laughs> <laughs> There's just an old man who shows up. He's like, my wife and child died. Thank you. Saintess. And she's like, I feel bad, but I have to go along with it because I was like, I did. It's frustrating characters you know what's funny here a two it says most or all characters are underdeveloped characters often behave in a way that is counter to their established motivations and personality for no discernible reason other than to move the plot along i actually don't think that's true i think everybody acts as their personalities have been established yeah but I'm still going to give it a two for characters because I don't like any of the characters. You know, the goal 
I'm going to have to actually listen to this episode and, and I, I want, if people listen to this episode and they disagree or they, they, they have suggestions. I, the point of this was to calibrate the rubric. And I do think the rubric is too specific to some of the stuff we read early on. Yeah. Like the point about characters being moved around like pieces. <laughs> that was something I saw a lot in, in some of the comics we read at first where people were just kind of wooden and they were being moved around like, like pawns in a game, but there's nothing in here that takes into account. Like what if the characters are just like not people? Yeah. Uh, It's you, you, you have like one or two personality aspects that you have said, this is a character and that's just what you do the whole time. And in fact, there's like no character development at all. All of the characters get introduced as this is who they are and no one changes. No one grows yeah. or changes. It's only at the very end that the crown prince goes, hey, maybe I made a mistake. <laughs> I think there's too much emphasis in the rubric on how the characters behave and not enough on how the, the characters are themselves. Because I'm going to say it too. I'm going to say the characters are underdeveloped because these are not real people. These are one dimensional cardboard cutouts. I hate them. Yeah. If we, if we take underdeveloped to mean not, you haven't explained them as a character enough. That's well, I just mean like the scientist needs more of a character. The protagonist needs more of a character. Like, yeah, they're just their, their worst or best traits and there's no depth at all and you know what i think you can do that in the case of this series the best traits that the main character has is oh i feel bad that's Mm -hmm. it she's Mm -hmm. she's not smart she's not capable they people espouse that she's smart and capable but we're not shown that ever and it's just like i don't feel for this character at all the only reason that I feel at all in this while reading this is because I hate the Saintus and the Crown Prince. <laughs> it's rage bait the comic. I mean, that's why I kept reading it. Okay. So I'm going to go with the two, but I think let me know what let me know your thoughts listeners because I think the rubric needs a little tweaking after this. I, I think this is, yeah, for characters, if if you had said one, I'd be like, yep. <laughs> I mean, it, it did keep you reading. Yeah. You, you did love to hate her, but I don't think you love to hate her, though. I think that's the problem. You didn't love to hate her. You hated to hate her. You wanted her mm, gone. Right. <laughs> you didn't want more. Uh Okay, let's talk about the romance. One. One. The whole, like... <laughs> this that... is the lowest rating I've ever given anything. <laughs> no, the, the whole thing where she's like... They're like, she just likes to have sex with men. I don't even she give a shit. She just likes to shit. have sex with all the men. I do <laughs> not like, give a shit cares? about the saintess. <laughs> I am not even thinking about the romance as 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 described with the saintess literally just the romance between connie and what's his name knight that's not a good sign what's his name (laughs) like they just show them oh they they like each other oh they're they 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 very strongly like each other why why oh he says oh connie you're so smart and capable and she's like oh you're so strong and you you take care of me no, it's That's because it. the, the person who wrote this is 14 or 15 and they've never had more than like, like the school crush romance. And like, then the, the pretty girl came and like took the boyfriend just because she could, because she doesn't like the girl. And she's now they're writing a story about how like, I'm going to like, 
Jacob's going to stay with me because he, he recognizes all my good qualities. And it's like, I just, I, oh my God. Like those good qualities that you haven't actually shown that you have. It's because like nobody, none of these people are adults. I, I'm, I'm sorry. But the whole, like the whole thing where like the guy walks up to you and he's like, I think that the pretty girl that everybody likes is actually a sex addicted freak and that you're the best girl. Mm -hmm. Like, come on. (laughs) Nobody has ever said that. (laughs) By the way, I think that the author is probably an adult by now. By now. Yeah, for sure. So I I don't think we're. And like uh, the people, I don't know if this was adapted. (laughs) If this was adapted, this is what I said in the discord was like, I, my vibe that I get from a lot of these is like written by children because I do not believe that the person who wrote this has ever had a, a, a sexual relationship as an adult. <laughs> I, I say that with a lot of confidence. Like it's, if this was adapted from one of those, uh, novel writing sites like Royal road or Shosetsuka Ninaro or whatever the Korean equivalent is like, it's very possible that somebody wrote this when they were young. Maybe it got picked up when they were an adult and they were just like, yeah, I'll take a check. Um, I can see the rage bait mm. getting a lot of clicks because it would. I mean, it, it kept a lot of people reading, obviously, because I saw the Bato comments. Everybody's just like, oh, I can't wait for her to get got. Like, <laughs> And I kept thinking as I was reading it, like, yeah, she's so horrible. She has to get got soon. Because it can't sustain this level of terrible for very long. And then it just kept going. <laughs> yeah, it just keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like wh- when when is it going to be over? Come on. <laughs> you can't keep doing this. Yeah. This doesn't have legs. What is happening? When I said this was like passable, I, I said like two of them were passable and one of them was uh, on the emperor's lap. I was only 20 chapters into this. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it just never changed. <laughs> and also when you said that I was not finished with on the emperor's lap. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. No, I could see how like uh, in some respects on the emperor. Well, on the emperor's lap is probably less frustrating than this. Well, the first, I, I mean, of it. yeah, like, okay. Art competency. Um, you know, I, I was thinking, um, the, it's, it's interesting because I like a lot of the other series that do a similar setup. Like I said, where it's like, you have the original female lead who's actually like someone from the real world and they are like, oh, this is a game or a book or whatever. So I'm going to do whatever I want because I have all this power, um, in all of the ones that do that, that I like, there's, well, there's two different ways that it goes. Either the original villainess, who is our protagonist, either shows themselves to be really capable and kind and, like, goes out of their way to, like, actually be a good person and do good things, or they lean into the villainous side but they do it much better than the original villainous villainous in the story does. And so they like, don't get caught or whatever it is. Both of those versions, you see the main character being capable and amazing. And you're, you're on their side. Cause you're like, yeah, you're awesome. And I, you, you need to win. And this didn't have that. It was, I don't care about you, but I need to see this person lose. Yeah. No, I mean, this is a teardown. It's not a story. Right. I'm just trying to find. um... See, that's why I said, like, what is the plot? Because, like, if the plot is just that the saint is terrible and deserves to die, that's not a plot, really. Because she doesn't have that much 
power. She's just mildly annoying. Right. And that that's my thing is like her great crime is she has sex with all the boys. And I'm like, I don't really care. And then like, yeah, she's using her powers to like enchant people, but like, okay, so get rid of her. Like uh, what's, what's the holdup? And then the miasma, like what's the point of the miasma other than the author doesn't understand why the saint is still around. So there has to be some magical evil that keeps her around. Like the way you would do this right is the way you create a two dimensional villain at at least two dimensional is like, take something like Joffrey from game of Thrones. There is a reason they don't kill him. And it's because other people are trying to use him to ascend to the throne. Like other people are trying to use him as a puppet. And so there's a dimension to his character where like, yes, he is a vindictive little idiot, but he's also being manipulated. There are, there's other forces. That's one way to do it. The other I mean, way they to do sort it, of did that with like, Oh, the miasma is still around. So we got to keep her around. Yeah. But the miasma is not people like the yeah. miasma is whatever the author tells us it is. And then it, sometimes it can just disappear when this, when it's time for the story to be over, there's no more miasma. Well, she act, she cleared it all up. Right. So and it just never came the, back. The kingdom <laughs> is keeping her around, even though they know she's awful. Right. But they're keeping her around because of the miasma, which is entirely the mechanics of it. We do not understand. Mm. The miasma goes away when, when it's time for the story to end. That's when she clears the last of the miasma. Yeah. I was trying to find some of my comments on here. Um, oh, your Bato comments? Yeah, specifically from the chapter where she finally uh, gets executed. Um, I, I think I remember you telling us about this. Yeah. Um, I can't find it, but one of my most top rated comments on that series is from the last chapter. Oh, thank God it's over. We can now be at peace. <laughs> my my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined uh yeah anyway our competency um i'm actually this is difficult because the art is terrible but also i can tell what's going on and so like i want to give it a one but i think i have to give it a two. Oh, i gave i gave it a two I think a two is, it's a solid two. Because it's like, yeah, there's some really awful parts, but generally speaking, you can tell what's going on. You don't really get confused about the setups and everything. And like, yeah, a lot of it is very basic. If you look at any of the interiors when they're like in the castle or in, in a house or whatever, it's literally just like flat white walls or flat colored walls. Maybe they put planks for the floor. Probably not. Uh, there's like one desk and one chair. And it's like, where's all the furniture? <laughs> where is literally yeah. any picture? Like, where is anything? The, the story is told mostly in extreme close-ups of people's faces because they know how to draw faces. Yeah. And and not really well. Just better than other things. Yep. Yeah. I really hope that this was the artist's first series. No, I, I, I said like this, you, at this point you might as well use AI art. Yeah. <laughs> the amount you're copying and pasting and the incompetence with which you're doing it. You might as well just use AI art. And I'm not an advocate of AI art. That's not, <laughs> a, that's, that's not like serious advice. That's, it's just like, wow, it's that bad. So with that, um, the flourish is get my first ever one. It would be better if you did less. Let me Photoshop a Dairy Queen into the background. You think? I actually don't know that there really was any flourish. Which I, stands at a two. The flourish I'm counting is like, 
I don't know. I, I just, I, I go back to that one because I copy and pasted it into the Discord. Is like, that fire was on laminate flooring. But you didn't need flourish? You didn't need to put in the flooring. You, you could have just had the tent. Either. You could have just had snow. You you could have just... It's baffling. Yeah. I, I guess it's baffling. There is a scene where there is a carriage moving along. No horse. <laughs> I think I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> there is another scene where a horse has two heads. Like, <laughs> you didn't need to. You I didn't think that's... Does that Tighten count as frame. flourish, though? Isn't that competency? Somebody's getting a one. Is it going to be the competency or is it going to be the flourish? I can give the flourish a two if I give the competency a one. Someone must pay for these crimes. Hmm. I would give competency a one then. Okay. That is how only because a two in artistic flourishes, no attempt at flourish or unique style was made. And I think that's what we have going on here. (laughs) I I have what may be controversial opinions about the next two. I'm going to leave our competency as two and I'm going to give art artistic flourish a two. So okay. you're gonna I'm go going low. Two. I think I'm going to be low on this one. It's actually lower than I thought it would be. I'm actually hating it more as we talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh God, personal preference. Um, this is weird. I think that this is, this needs to be a 1.5 because like, I you can't can understand say I why people absolutely, read it. <laughs> I can't say I absolutely hated it, but I also can't understand its appeal to others. So like Oh. Uh, I mean I read I mean, the whole thing. I think I have to give it a two. That's fine. I gave it a one. That's I did not read the whole thing. I'm yeah. not interested in reading the whole thing. And then this bleeds into recommendation strength. Also a one. You don't need to fall for rage bait. I don't think this is good for people. <laughs> I don't want to recommend this to anyone. Yeah. I, I guess I could recommend it to people who wouldn't care about significant issues. Like if you really are like a, a curator of o- Otome Isekai, like this exists. But I'm, I'm going to give it a two. You're just a curator because, of Otome <laughs> Just because there were multiple people in the comments that I was reading this alongside of that were like, yes, we are reading this because we need to see the Saintist die. Okay, you know what? I'll give you a two because I also like bad movies. <laughs> I, is, I yes, will yeah. go watch a terrible like Jalo horror film. Just to make fun of it with other people. I, I do understand that. So I will give it a two. All right. Well, this is, uh, I, this might be a toss up for between this and on the emperor's lap for the worst. I thing. know I'm, I'm, <laughs> because I'm upset with myself. Uh, I'm at a 32. I'm at a 23. <laughs> yeah. Which means um, I'm giving this. Oh, here you go. I actually rated this one before and I gave it a four. Oh, so I'm dropping this down to a three and I think you're at a solid two. Yeah. Well, I mean, scientifically proven that it's it's bad. This one broke the rubric, I, I think. <laughs> I, I definitely think this. we found our flaws. We strength tested it, and it broke on this one. So you're going to rewrite the rubric? I think we... I, I, I'm looking for input. But we yeah, have to go think, back and re-rate everything. <laughs> well, I think the stuff we rated... I, I think just the descriptions for characters need to change a little bit. Yeah. 
I think it's too specific to a certain flaw with character writing. And I was not considering other possibilities for character flaws. So <laughs> I did not understand the depth with which we could sink. I guess, honestly, I didn't understand like this is quite frankly, unpublishable in a traditional sense. Like back in the day when you had gatekeepers for distribution, like when there was only so much paper to like put into stores and only so much shelf space on which to put it on. Like this is not publishable. Yeah, if you, so, if you took an initial draft of this to a publisher, they wouldn't even read the whole thing. They'd get no. halfway through the first one, and then they'd go, are you serious? What is this? <laughs> but it seems like these sites will put anything on there. <laughs> so I need to recalibrate the rubric. I didn't consider how bad things could get. <laughs> I didn't think about the implications. Oh God. Okay. Here's a question for you. Uh, is this worse than ghost hunting for dummies? <laughs> you know what? I I want to say yes, but I, I can't because unless I find out she plagiarized half of the thing, <laughs> I, I got to say, at least it's an original work. <laughs> yeah, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zach Baggins, step up your game. How Zach Baggins, come on. That, that was the thing that offended me the most. It's like, it's ghost hunting, right? You're making everything up anyway. Like you have no idea what is setting off any of your instruments. You're just trying to create as much static as you can to interpret into some kind of being. Mm-hmm. So how hard is it to just make up a couple hundred pages of a book? Yeah. Like, and he just couldn't even be bothered to do that. What, listen to words about books, ghost hunting for dummies. It's one of the worst things. It's literally the worst thing I've ever read still to this day. All right. Well, let's see if on the emperor's lap and change your opinion. <laughs> I don't actually think it's worse now that I'm, I'm struggling now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can I tell you can I tell you a take for On the Emperor's Lap that I don't know if I've seen anyone else make and I, I feel like it's so obvious, but I just don't know if the overlap is there for people to realize it. On the Emperor's Lap with with just like a couple of tweaks is berserk fan fiction. Oh. Yeah. On the Emperor's Lap is just a fanfic where Guts marries Griffith. Huh. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking that the whole time I was reading it. And I was like, how is nobody talking about this? This is the exact like plot of Berserk. All right. Um, this has also got a, a short uh uh, description here so i'll go over that and then we'll get into oh just the journey that this was little bella a war orphan who once tr- no that's seriously what that says little bella a war orphan who once trusted for survival semicolon grows up carrying an abandonment wound what it's a life without purpose. She's the unseen, unheard, and a war slave. Kyrus embraces Bella, a girl he once abandoned, now has been forgotten. Maybe it's too late when he'd found her again. Will she get over past hurts and believe in love again when there is too much damage done? That is... The this worst. is a more accurate summary than anything <laughs> I could have yeah. hoped for. <laughs> that is that is the worst written <laughs> summary I have ever seen. Well, what they the forgot hell? to mention that Bella is an idiocy. <sighs> okay. <laughs> so on the Emperor's Lap, I 
started reading On the Emperor's Lap three years ago, something like that. And I don't remember for sure, but I think I got like 15 to 25 chapters in before I put it on my on hold list and was like, I'll pick this back up eventually because there wasn't anything that was really grabbing me. And let's be fair. There's a ton of abuse and awful stuff in the very beginning of this series. And so it could be difficult for some people to read. Um, but it's rated a 4.7. And so it was the lowest thing. It was the lowest rated thing on our list of possibilities for this episode, which people were all about. So I had to, to read it again. So I started reading it again from the beginning because I, ha I didn't remember what was happening. And after I get got over sort of the initial hump of like awful stuff that happened, I started going, oh, I, I think I'm on board with this because Bella is acting realistically. She was abandoned by Kiris. And when she, even though she was in love with him back then, after she got abandoned and went through all this terrible stuff and she meets up with him again, she hates him because he put her through that. And that is so realistic and great. And there's other men around her. And so I'm going, okay. So the the finale of this is she's not going to get back with Kiris because you can't for he he sold her. I was gonna say the word abandoned is doing a lot of heavy lifting. Yeah. He he did like, a little more than that. <laughs> and and so I was I was reading this with this this in my mind of like, oh, Kiris is going to get his comeuppance in some way and maybe she'll still get to be the empress or something like that. Right. Like, we'll we'll get a resolution to this that is realistic because the author is showing me that they understand how awful this was and the trauma that she went through. And she's acting realistically on these emotions that she's having. She hates him. She literally the first words that she says to him after he heals her tongue is I hate you. Okay. So for those who haven't read it, he sells her into sex slavery where she's tortured and has her tongue cut out. No, well, sex slavery. That's a bit too harsh. No, she's a whipping girl. She is like <laughs> sexually assaulted by like him at least a couple of times. And, uh, uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Or you mean afterwards? Afterwards when, when he yeah, gets her yeah. back. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, then she's a, se he doesn't sell her into sex slavery. He sells her to a noble to be a whipping boy because she did the, that noble didn't know that she was a girl at the time. Um, and then through a series of events, she ends up as a sex slave that is given to the emperor who is Kiris at this point. Yeah. And he so doesn't were, recognize her at first, which is a whole thing. So they were, they were part of a mercenary band, right? Not unlike guts and Griffith. <laughs> and then at some point in order to get more power for himself, uh, he, he gives her up as a sort of sacrifice, not unlike guts and Griffith. And, she comes back and when she sees him, like it's hinted that like, maybe she wants to take her revenge, not unlike guts and Griffith. And at that point I was like, huh, this could be a little berserk story. But then she gets sexually assaulted by him. And I'm like, ah, oh boy, I w like, I wonder. And, and like the emperor's like, he's, he's like, oh, he's, he's a sad boy sometimes. I'm like, ah, dear. So I, I just went and I read the last 10 chapters and I was like, yep, no, nope, no. Nope. That's what I thought was going to happen. And I came back and I just read the whole, the whole, the whole rest of it with a scowl on my face. See, our journeys were different <laughs> because I, I went through an order. And so I went on the roller coaster. I was, 
I was totally on board with, you know, Kiris is going to get his comeuppance in, in the end. The, the author is showing us that she understands how awful this trauma was and everything. And it's like, oh yeah, he's like trying to do things to be forgiven. He is actually like changing. He's not just murdering everybody because she says, don't murder everybody. And he's trying to give her everything and all that. But even through all of that, we keep seeing that Bella is like, no, I don't forgive you. It's great that you're doing this. Keep it up. But I don't forgive you. I still don't like you. And, and so I'm like, this is great. And then we get to the end of season two, right? And Bella dies. And I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? (laughs) Because the only person who could forgive this guy is Jesus Christ. And that's what (laughs) Bella will need to become (laughs) in order to forgive this man. (laughs) Imagine, imagine my frustration as I'm sitting here. And I get to the end of season two and she dies. She gets poisoned by the emperor's right hand man because he needs a war to start for some reason, which is not fully developed. And then he never comes back and it's never explained by the way. Um, and is it weird that the emperor's right hand man for no reason at all looks like a, a Osamu Tezuka character? <laughs> There's actually a couple of them. There's a couple points where I'm like, wait, is that the strategist? No, it's someone different. They look <laughs> identical. There's a couple um, of people who just look like old timey anime characters yeah. for no reason. <laughs> anyway, so she's dead and her body gets taken by the king of the 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 rival kingdom, right? Who's whose king is like the most pure evil person? Because we have to have one of those to compare our person that needs to be the male lead for some reason against so that he doesn't seem as bad. I'm going to be honest with you. The only way he can seem more bad is just to do it to more children. <laughs> like it's it's a, it's really a question of like quantity at this point, because I feel like the love interest has committed like the worst crimes a, a person can commit. Like, yeah. It's literally unforgivable. But he's like, sad about it. <laughs> I And he should be for the rest of his days. And okay. he should thank her mercy that he has the rest of his days. If I were her, I would have cut his limbs off and thrown him in a dungeon to just die of gangrene. I need, I need to be very clear here that up until the end of season two, I was basically on board with this. Not the best thing, but like the emotional reactions that people were having to the events that were happening made sense to me. And I was like on board with this as like, oh, it's a tragedy story, right? So we'll probably have a tragic ending. And honestly, when she died, I was like, oh, maybe that's the tragedy. She never actually got over her trauma and now she's dead. Like I, I understand where you're coming from now. I was afraid you were going to tell me like you were on board with the love story or something. Like you thought like you could get past the initial thing and like, no, she, when I said, could, yeah, yeah. I was afraid of that because I was going to like, I was planning on this whole episode being me just like, cause I saw this in the Bato comments. And for once I was so proud of them. Cause like at the end of every chapter, you scroll down to the bottom and the first thing you see is all caps he sold her in to slavery. Yeah. <laughs> that was all I was planning on saying to you this entire episode. No, you know, the, the reason why I tend to overlook the slavery stuff is because what almost every series does is even though the main character has slaves, he treats them well. He like expresses that he doesn't necessarily like slavery as a system, but that's how the world works. Like it's dumb. Sure. But it's not evil, you know? Yeah. He doesn't enjoy the slavery, I guess. Right. I mean, and and so 
<laughs> in this aspect, I'm on board with the fact that this guy is awful and I don't give a shit if he's sorry and is trying to ask for forgiveness. He literally put her through the worst possible thing that someone can go through. And so I'm like, yeah, tragedy. I'm on board here. She's realistic. I like her characterization. She went through some awful shit. She's basically got no emotions left besides I hate you. She's like having this, maybe something's happening with the Duke's son, Eden. Like maybe he's the male lead. There's a question there, but also he's sort of like weird and messed up too, that we don't quite see until further in. And so it's like, huh, how are they setting this up? What's going on here? Maybe Crum is the Crim. Maybe Crim is going to be the, the male lead. He's the only one who immediately recognized her from the past and was like, oh, I, I'm so happy to see you. I'll support you and everything. And like, he never betrayed her. He thought she was dead because that's what Kiris said is that, oh, he's dead because it was Bell at the time. They didn't know she, she was a girl. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on where I'm like, okay, this isn't necessarily good, but I'm, I'm interested in it and I think it can be okay. And I'm sitting here going, it seems like people rated this too low. I'm not quite sure why everyone's so frustrated. And then season three starts. And oh boy, did I fall off quick. <laughs> season three starts with her soul being put in another body, right? Is that what makes it an isekai, by the way? Was she like isekai into this world or was that like what made it an isekai? No. And, and realistically, it's not an isekai because it's just reincarnation. She doesn't go to another world. Um, but yes, that's the thing that makes it isekai adjacent. Okay. She gets put in this other body and she's with a devil. And by the way, this never gets fully resolved. It's hinted at that Kiris made a deal with the devil in order to get her soul back in some way. Not unlike Griffith. But they never fully explain it. And they don't explain like, what did he give up to the devil to they just gloss over that. There's a bunch of unresolved plot points like that that are definitely going to drag the score of this down. So she's there. She's with this devil, right? And she's like, but I'm not in my body. And the devil goes, you could, if you find your body, you could get it back. It's been three years. At which point I was like, how is her body still? I was wondering that myself. She's, she's just looking in the mirror. She's like, I miss my dead fish eyes. Right. I hated her character design, by the way. Like, this is just personal preference, but like, why are her eyes on? Like, why are her are her eyes next to her ears? <laughs> I hate that. I didn't really think about that, but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it bothered me so much. <laughs> and she's always just like looking, like because she's so emotionless all the time. She just looks like a fish. Yeah. Ah. Oh. But they keep talking about how she's the most beautiful. Right. Yeah, no, go nuts. I I mean, I don't want to make fun of her appearance because like on top of everything else she's been through, like it's enough. <laughs> she's she's been through enough, but like if like like look, if if I had been through what she had been through, I'm going to go join the the wilderness villainess. I'm just going <laughs> to move out to the middle of nowhere. I'm going to get a dog and a shotgun. And I'm just going to kill whoever comes near me for the rest of my life. Like, I'm just going to, I'm going to have a garden. <laughs> okay. So she's with this devil, right? In her new body, who is the body of some Duke's daughter in the other kingdom who they are currently at war because Karis is like, I need to find her body. So we're going to go to war for three years. Um, She's talking with the devil and the devil's like, yeah, if you can find your body, I can put you back in. And she's like, well, what do you get out of it? And he's like, well, we need to make a contract. Uh, I'd like to eat your misery. And I was like, okay. I, yeah, I. that was when I was like, oh, okay. 
So you you know what you did. Like the author, like you've been told now by at least one person that like this person would never like she 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 can't get with the emperor. Well, but here's the thing. It wasn't it wasn't up until the final point of of this sort of scene where I was like, "Oh no." Because I'm 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 like okay they established magic before the the devil holy powers all that okay all right so she's gonna make a deal with this devil he's gonna eat her her misery she she relives it so he can eat it right so she goes through this very painful experience where she, all of this ho- horrible stuff that happened to her comes back into her brain and and I'm like okay so that's what she's paying she has to like relive this right now. And then he, he's like, okay, I ate the, I ate it. And she's like, oh, it's all gone. I don't feel, I feel it better anymore. now. And I was like, no, no, you fucking didn't. No. She's like, maybe I don't hate Kyrus anymore. I'm like, no, you don't, you can't. Ah! <laughs> what if Guts didn't have to slowly learn how to be a person again? What if he didn't have to endure the berserk armor? What if, like, some random dude could just come along, eat Guts' trauma, put his eye back in his head, and give him another arm? What if, like, yeah, that's the end of Berserk. And that's why he died before he finished it. Because, like, somebody saw that and just throttled him. (laughs) Here's the thing, though. What if that happened, and then also he was like, hey, Griffith, it's okay. I forgive you. And then they kiss. Because that's what happens. She goes and she meets up with him, with Kyrus, and is like, and Kyrus immediately recognizes her, even though she's in another body and no one else does. Because he's better also now. Not because now he can explained. see who she really is. That's what it means. He's better. He's a better person now. He couldn't see her before because he didn't care about people because he was a bad person back then. But now he cares and he can see her even though she's in a different body because he's better now. And then like the first one of the first things she says to him is, I forgive you. And I was like, I'm fucking done. I am. I am so over this. You had me in the first half, not going to lie. <laughs> uh, and I immediately was like, uh, I don't know that 4.7 is low enough. So this, this is, is why, like, unfortunately, this is a little bit better done than Wilderness Villainous. But it's like so much worse. Like Wilderness Villainous is just like, okay, you're... It feels to me like a girl talking about another girl she doesn't like. This, this is fucked up. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like that is just like, okay, grow up, get over it. Like this is like, (laughs) it's, it's so much more frustrating because it was like, you were doing it right. You had the right idea. This is like, you fumbled the ball at the end of the third quarter and then screwed up the entire fourth quarter. Well, I, I mean, they really thought like, I, I really think they, they either read berserk or some story like berserk. And the fantasy here is what if like they wallowed in misery and then like got like the fantasy is like that abuse is hot. I, I don't know how else you can interpret it. You know what? I would have I would have given a higher rating to this is just abuse and and like they're into it, but they already established that she's not into it and she she hates him for what he did to her, rightly so. And like the only way that they got out of it was to literally remove her feelings. I feel like that's the point where an editor got involved where an editor is like, you can't just have them. (laughs) I, I have no idea. I, I, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to guess how this even came to be. And I can't, I have no idea. Like the, when, when I was reading this, I was like, 
I feel like, I mean, obviously it was machine translated in parts because like uh, some of the translation is just terrible, but like also just, I think that's pretty accurate. The (laughs) plot points are, there's no way they're not what I'm reading. Like there's no way that this all comes down to translation. And like, this feels to me like it was written by chat GPT. <laughs> like I can't understand the person who wrote this. I mean, we should, we should be fair. Chat GPT didn't exist when they wrote this. So <laughs> I know that's, what's boggling my mind. Like if you told chat GPT to write an erotic guts Griffith fan fiction, it would do a better job of this story. Yeah. So I'm reading through the the final season, the third season, and I'm just so pissed off, right? And then there was like a little ray of hope because they keep mixing in this thing where she's going, you know, I've forgiven him. I don't know if I actually love him. I don't know if I can go that far. They keep putting this in over and over again of like, maybe she's just actually emotionless now. It's not that she's in love with him. It's just that she doesn't care anymore. But see, the author thinks that you're in suspense because like, oh no, she doesn't love him. But you're actually in suspense because you're like, oh, thank God. She might not love him. (laughs) (laughs) That was so, but that was the thing that kept me like, now I was going to read this whole thing no matter what for this, but like, that was the thing that made me go, okay, maybe there's still something here that I want to see the resolution of. Right. And, and to be fair, I think given how I was basically on board with season one and two, I probably would have finished this anyway just because I had gotten so far into it. But there's this key point right near the end where she's being crowned empress, right? And they're like, come up these steps and to get your crown. And she's like, starts to walk up the steps and then she stops and she like drops her flower bouquet. And she's like, I don't know if I don't think I can do this. Am I really going to do this? Is this really okay? And I'm like, yes, because how can you live your life with him? Like he did all that horrible stuff to you. Are you getting your, your feelings back? Like, yeah. And then she's like, Oh no, I was just nervous because I don't think I'm, uh, good enough to be the empress. I was like, no, fuck you. What are you talking about? No. (laughs) The, the ultimate ending would have been, she gets all the way to the wedding. He thinks it's finally done. He's finally forgiven. And that's when she stabs him. Right. Yes. 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 <laughs> She's like standing there next to him. Like, yes, I'm Empress now. And just like grabs a sword and beheads him. And it's like, like if I'm the Empress. <laughs> it's like if Kill Bill ended with her just forgiving Bill. Yeah. Like we're done. Oh, you know what? Bill's not that bad of a guy. He He was actually, you know, it's actually my fault because I actually like I left him and that hurt his feelings. And that's why he came and he shot me in the face. And you know what? It was actually my fault I got shot in the face. I shouldn't have done that to him. I want to be clear. At no point did Bella go, oh, it was my fault that he (laughs) sold me into slavery. She didn't go that far. (laughs) No, but her her hesitation was, I don't know if I can be the empress and like be in charge of everybody. Yeah. Which was like, they sort of give you a little bit of that earlier on when she's having these like lessons that she's doing for history and all this kind of, and politics and all that where people keep telling her like, wow, you're like really smart and you catch on really quickly and you're really great at this, but she's still got reservations about it for some reason, even though like she's visibly better than everyone else at everything. (laughs) What's the age difference between them, by the way? I think it's only like, three or four years at most. Okay. I couldn't really tell from the character designs. I think at one point they're like, she's like, I'm 19 now and he's 22 or something like that. 
Okay, because he he has like an older brother relationship with her, yeah. which is At also the beginning like, anyway. Yeah, yeah. And then like when when they're in their late teens, as the the knights, the Jedi knights. Oh my god! And there was one point near, near the <laughs> end where the translator actually put Jedi knights, and I was like, "Yo, you can't, <laughs> you can't just say that." <laughs> They're the Knights of Rin. Uh, um, but yeah, so it's like when they're in their late teens that they are like, whoa, maybe we love each other. Except they don't talk about it. They have a kiss. And then he's like, I can't I'm selling you into slavery. This. Right. Just like, oh, my God, he's just the worst. And you know what? Even when he's trying to, like, ask for forgiveness and everything, he goes way too far in the other direction and is also the worst. <laughs> there is be- no point either you know, on his evil side or his good side where he is like a good character that I want good things to happen to. Look, I, I, I consider myself to be a pretty forgiving person. Like I can, I can let a lot of things go. Pretty liberal guy. Think jail sentences are too long. Stuff like that. But like, there are some crimes that you can't come back from, and one of them is selling a girl into slavery <laughs> because you have feelings. Yeah, and uh, you know, if you're the kind of person who could ever have done that, you'll never not be a bad person. Yeah, I I just don't. Like, maybe that's a controversial take. No. Because, like, I know, like, that's my thing where I'm like, you know, hey, Jesus can forgive you. I can't. Like, maybe your soul's not damned. You know, maybe you spend your whole life in repentance for that crime. And maybe you you feel, maybe somehow, like, in some cosmic sense, you can be forgiven. But no, not by the girl you sold. No. You know what this reminds me of? (laughs) I read these posts on Reddit um, on like, am I the asshole or um, off my chest or whatever, where people talk about these things where like someone does something really horrible to them and they are like, I'm going to cut contact and like all this kind of stuff. Am I the asshole for doing that? My family says that I should forgive them and move on, even though they did this wholly irredeemable thing to me. My my mom says I'm destroying the family by doing, and I always read those posts and I'm like, who are these crazy people who are like, I don't care what your brother-in-law did to you. That's the worst thing ever. You need to forgive them because they're family. Those crazy people are the people who read this and went, she needs to forgive him because he's in love with her and he's trying to be good. Those people exist and I hate them and they should die. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's people who exist. They're either, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to say like, I don't want to make like a broad sweeping judgment, but I have a very hard time thinking that anybody who sees the good in the emperor is not either like abused themselves or an abuser or both. Yeah. And And you know what? You can see the good in him. You can see, oh, he's changing and he's trying to be better and still go, it's not good enough. No, there's it's a point good where, that like, you're doing that, but it's not enough. I can see there is not, nothing that's enough. I can see not killing him. Yeah. I can see her setting aside a quest for vengeance or something like that. Yeah. But I cannot see my way to just full. Yeah. It's like it never happened. We can be cool again in the way we were before. No, that's not what, like, in in this case, that isn't even what forgiveness would look like. Forgiveness would look like you give up being the emperor, go away, meditate for the rest of your life on what you've done, do your best to, like, help people out or something for the rest of your life, and, like, I'll just maybe wave to you if I see you on the street. But even then, 
that to me is like the behavior of a saint. Me yeah. personally, I stab you on your wedding day. And you know, I was, I think something that makes it worse is that I was reading this, this, the third season and I got that hint of like, oh, she just doesn't have emotions. She, she will never love him, but she's just going to let whatever happen because she's got no emotions now. And I, I clung to that as like, this is not make good it enough, make but it it's make it all we're going to get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then they just threw that out and they were like, oh no, she was actually apprehensive because she doesn't have enough confidence. And I was like, this is the worst thing I have ever read. Yeah. Uh, again, I mean, it makes me wonder about the morals of the author because I just, yeah. I don't, uh, fiction is fiction. I'm not going to, I'm not going to judge anybody who likes this, but I will say like, if this was your favorite love story in the world, you might want to talk to a therapist <laughs> about what happened to you. <laughs> we should say, so I, I legitimately want to have a conversation with anybody who actually likes this. I, we're obviously going to disagree, but I don't think like you're not a failure as a person. And I don't hate you if you liked this, but I want to know why I want to have a conversation. So like if someone's listening to this and they're like, I can't believe these guys are trashing on this so much. It's not that bad. It's not a big deal. Such an, like, come, come on the discord, come talk to us. I'm legitimately interested in your thoughts. I can see I feel like very you. strongly about this. <laughs> I could see liking the series, but this is one of those romances where like I could see liking the series and maybe choosing to ignore the romance or just choosing to whatever. But like I, I can even see liking it, you know, whatever. But like what I can't understand is anybody who like this really clicked for them. Like this is the romance. Like this is. This is your favorite romance. You read it over and over and over again because it's it like there's got to be at least one person out there who this is their favorite. Well, there and are like, uh, 9.3% of people who rated this five stars. Yeah, I don't five. get it. I don't get it. I want to talk to these people. I I want to know what you're getting out of this that you're like really enjoying. And And if those people say, well, I stopped at the end of season two. I considered that the end because she died. Okay. Yeah. No, I get that. Totally on board. That is legitimate. I didn't hate the first two seasons of this. Again, if you treat it as a tragedy and the end is she dies and no one's happy. Yes, that is a compelling story. I don't necessarily like it because I'm not really into tragedies, but like up until then, it wasn't terrible. But if you read the whole thing and you were like, yeah, season three, I liked where it went. And I liked that they did this, that I, I want to talk to you. I want to know how your brain <laughs> works. Understand. Yeah. Yeah. Because obviously, as we've found over the last half an hour or so, I feel very strongly about this. It really did a number on me. And I, 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 I'm an empathetic person. And I, I think generally I'm really good at understanding what people are getting out of things, even if I'm not getting that same thing out of it. And I legitimately don't understand how people are rating this five out of five stars. No, I don't understand how it was like written <laughs> other than like you were going for something and it didn't work out. Like that's, that's the only thing I can think with this is like you went too ham at the get go. Yeah. Like, I, I guess that, that could be a tendency that happens sometimes is like, if you minimize what was done in the beginning, because it wasn't 
done necessarily on the page. A lot of it's done in the margins and I'm imagining like they don't show her, her torment in detail. Yeah. Um, if, if you're like, if you're able to minimize the beginning, then I can see the end. Cause that happens a lot in these Otome Isekai where like the guy is just too bad at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's written by somebody who like, doesn't have a real like visceral connection to that sort of thing. Right. And, and so like, they don't, they, they just like, to them, they're just writing, he did some bad stuff. He, yeah. he has a character arc. He gets better. Cause like, that's, that's a thing. Like it, it happens a lot in these where the guy is just an impossible asshole at the beginning. I mean, even save for the taste, the, yeah. the one here that we were like, Oh, this isn't too bad. The Duke, Duke Legion in that at the beginning does awful, irredeemable things like, I think what what makes that work for me though is like Duke Legion his name is literally Duke Legion and it's a show about magic f- or it's not a show it's a comic about magic food like I don't it's not taking itself so ridiculously seriously yeah so I I can accept that there is a a logic unlike my my real world logic whereas on the emperor's lap is trying to take itself very seriously. Like it wants you to be invested in the trauma only to have a magical devil come out of nowhere and take the trauma away. It's, <laughs> it's time for the trauma to go away. Like the, the most generous thing I can say about this is it is incredibly badly written because the other option is that you wrote exactly what you intended to write and you're a little messed up. <laughs> Honestly, I, I would feel better about it if they were just a messed up person. <laughs> I don't know if I would. I don't want to believe that uh, that's in the world, I guess, but I know it is. <laughs> and again, um, I don't know if you're ready to go to the rubric, but I've been thinking about it as we're talking, and this is another one where it kind of breaks the rubric. Like, I I have read a lot of stuff in my time that I uh, morally disagree with a lot. And I try to be fair to people who have a different morality than me. Um to an extent. I mean, there, there are things we can disagree on, but there are also things I don't think we can disagree on. I think there are just universally bad things like selling someone into slavery and Mm -hmm. uh, the sexual assault and stuff like, so with content and ideas, I'm in a rough patch because there are ideas. Um, I just hate them. You know, what's interesting. I think it's possible this might be rated higher than villainous survives in the wilderness. And even that's, though I hate it more. Yeah. I, I was going to say that, <laughs> that, that was the point of the rubric we did for words about books was I wanted to separate my personal beliefs about something from the quality of its craft, I guess. Like, was it well written? Was it, th- there's plenty of books that I find morally reprehensible Mm. that are well-written. Right. Um, But with this one, let's, let's, I'm going to, I'm going to pull this up here. Uh, Just real quick. I noticed something looking at some of the, uh, the URLs that are Mm -hmm. listed here. Um, And a lot of them, (laughs) it looks like it says emperor slap. (laughs) <laughs> and I, I'm like, hey, that describes how I feel about this. I want to slap the shit out of him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. So I guess we have to include romance. Okay. It's a one. Um, we can just do that one now. Um, 
I hate it. <laughs> yeah, one. Definitely yeah. one. One for Roman. That's, okay, that, going that's the back. easy one. Uh, content and ideas. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a two for content and ideas, because clear ideas and plot are present, but are never developed, and major arcs are left unresolved. There are way too many unresolved threads here that they're just like, well, that's not the point of the story, so we don't care. <sighs> Yeah, I have to give it a two. Where I struggle with this is clear ideas. I guess maybe the idea is clear and I'm just resisting accepting. I think that's what it is, yeah. Because, like, what is the central idea? Like, what is the point of this story? Is it a love story, I guess? It is uh, partially a love story. I think it's the, I think the, the, the central theme of what's going on is trauma and forgiveness. And Boy. I don't think that it's done correctly, but I think there is a clear idea of that. If the central theme is trauma and forgiveness, I would say there's a clear idea. I guess my brain is resisting that theme because it is so poorly executed. Yeah. Pacing. Now, pacing and structure, I'm giving a one. Really? I There were multiple times where I was reading this where I went, wait a minute. And I went back a chapter. And I'm like, yeah. And then I went forward and I went, what? They just skip so much stuff. And then sometimes <laughs> they spend three chapters in one place talking about one thing and it's just like this is wildly inconsistent and like confusing and bad you know i was i was initially shocked by the one but the more i think about it the more i think maybe maybe this is where some of my some of my dislike of the the story in general can go because i am having a tough time understanding where the focus is yeah if the focus is on forgiveness well i'm not convinced <laughs> so you didn't spend enough time on it um you you did not convince me um and if the focus is on anything else i, I mean i guess you could say it's a little all over the place with that i don't know what we're doing here something uh Something interesting. So there's there's multiple time skips in this, but the main time skip that is sort of like a crux of the story is the one between season two and three, right? Three years pass. The problem is when you do a time skip, the time skip needs to be there for a reason. You need to establish after the time skip what happened during that time and why that was important, but also why we didn't see it. Right. Mm -hmm. When they do this time skip, this three year time skip, and they're like, the war has been going on for three years. Stuff happened. They, they tell you what happened in a very broad sense. You don't get any details. And then over time you realize nothing actually happened That's during also that not whole time the only time skip. So why that was the egregious one for me. The other ones <laughs> I, I sort of was like, okay, this happened during the time skip and we had to skip that because of the, like that. Those ones were less egregious. This one, they're very clear three years and it's a war. And it's like, what, why did the war have to be going on for three years? Why didn't you just do six months? Why didn't you do three weeks? You could have, stuck this war into a three week time period. Like there was no reason why you had to do three years and give me all these questions that you're never going to answer. Were they trying to like age the characters up? I don't think so. They were already adults by the time the main story started. That's the other thing. I can't tell how old anybody is. And that's partly the art style. Um, you're either drawn like a, like literally if anybody remembers the, how to draw ma manga books, you're either drawn like somebody on the cover of how to draw manga or 
or Salma Tezuka. Also, what the hell was the point of that little kid that she sponsored from the orphanage? No idea. Nothing happened with that. No. He was happy when she came back. That was it. What was the what was that? I think they're trying to humanize her. Like I don't like her as much as you do. Um I didn't like her for who <laughs> she is. I liked her as a character that I could understand her trauma and her feelings. I don't understand her feelings. I, I, I mean, certainly didn't understand them after her feelings got <laughs> eaten. I think, well, I guess that could be a, a, a case of the way I, I chose to read it by, by spoiling myself. On yeah. Where I was going. Yeah. Honestly, like you probably shouldn't have done that. No, I probably shouldn't have because <laughs> the whole time I was reading it, I was just like, she's got that dead fish. I'd stare. Yeah. And I'm like, what is going through her head? She hates him. Good. You should. Why are you still there? leave oh <laughs> speaking of which so the side stories at the end that you didn't read how goddamn unnecessary like there's there's one side story where it's like okay it's the future and they have a kid and the kid is terrible for no reason and well, the, it just ends and he's terrible. And I'm like, what are you doing? And then there's another one where it's like, here's an alternate universe where uh, Bella is the secret noble and Kyrus is her uh, right hand man. And she gives him up. And then she like actually recognizes him when she finds him and like was searching for him the whole time. And it's like, oh, even the alternate universe She's way better, even though they're setting it up to be like, oh, she did the same thing. <laughs> I'm just like, I okay. I'll tell you what I didn't understand about her character because this bleeds into the characters. I think we've wrapped up pacing. Wait, what did you what did you give pacing? One. Okay. Um, characters, I give it a one. I I really I don't understand her. I I she's a fighting badass, and that's where I get the guts comparison. She's got aura or whatever she's got magic sword powers and she's pretty strong she can she can beat up whoever she wants to beat up um the only reason she got sold in that case is like she was like injured i mean she could kill her way out of pretty much anything she chooses no, no. not no, to. he sold her because he was in love with her right but i mean why he's like she fight back is my thing Why did she allow herself to be sold? Why is she his yeah, that's to a sell? Good question. Uh, yeah. Like, why did she just go, oh, I guess he's allowed to do that? Yeah. She wasn't a slave before. How do you sell someone into slavery who, I mean, obviously chattel slavery works that way, but like in, in the Eastern slavery trades that we're basing this off of you are either a war slave a criminal slave or a debt slave yeah she, she didn't have any for of that. him she's not like they're not related he's not her yeah. father um yeah, it would be like if someone came to me and was like hey i need a slave here's a million dollars and i was like uh hey ben you're this guy's slave now yeah and i'd be like hey, fuck you uh <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> like and she's got a sword. She knows how to use it. She's really good at using it. She's better than most of humanity at using it. How did you enslave her? So that's where I'm like, the story moves them around like pawns. That's one of my things. Uh, it, it actually fits this time. I don't know why she allowed herself to be enslaved. I don't know why she stayed a slave. I don't know why when she comes back, she didn't just cut his head off. I think they did establish that he is stronger than her. Okay. He's asleep. He 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 assaults her and then goes to sleep. Cut his head off. Um, I think yeah, you definitely need to rewrite some of these character ones because, quite honestly, I think the description for number two is accurate. Most or all characters are underdeveloped. Characters often behave in a way that is counter to their established motivations and personality for no discernible reason other than to move the plot along. I think that fits more closely than just pieces being moved around because 
Yeah. You, you do get an establishment there. However, all of the characters are so poorly written and I hate every single person in this except for Red. And I didn't hate Bella at the beginning, but I do hate her now. I'm, no. I have to give this a one. Yeah, characters needs to change. We're so this, the, We achieved our goal here of testing the rubric. Characters does not work. But it is at least we got something out of this. Whatever I change it to, <laughs> whatever I change it to, it's going to be a one. <laughs> this is going to be a one. Characters one. I hate everyone in this. <laughs> Characters one. You fundamentally misunderstand humanity. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> like, that uh, might just well, be the one fundamentally what, misunderstands people. <laughs> uh, I'm not worried about this getting a better score than Villainous Survives in the Wilderness now. No, the art's a little better, but that's about it. Yeah. Okay. So art competency, um, I guess a two. Oh uh, yeah. You know what? I was going to give it a three, but they do have a lot of weird proportions. There's a specific one. People, uh, if you jump in the discord and, and go back to where we were discussing this, there's a very distinct panel that I put a, uh, a screenshot in, um, uh, where is it? see here oh her fat finger yeah she's um if you if you're gonna draw a mute if you're gonna have a mute character uh learn how to draw hands because this they're gonna is so weird a lot. okay she's pointing directly at the camera and her finger is pointed down she's pointing at the camera like this have you ever seen those people with like deformities hand deformities where like one finger is way bigger than yeah. the other one. That's what it looks like. The angle looks wrong. like they, yeah, it looks like they tried to do a, uh, like a 3d effect and just failed. So that's yeah, not they, even close though. <laughs> no, they, they, what they needed to do was do what I'm doing that no one can see. Cause it's an audio medium. They needed to point at a camera, right? Picture draw that they drew it without a reference and it looks terrible so it's very bad in a lot of ways but for the most part you can understand everything that's going on generally speaking it looks the same throughout so they're not like wildly different styles and i think as you mentioned it gets better as it goes on the art that is the story gets way worse. <laughs> yeah. Artistic flourish. This is this is weird. So as I'm reading this, I'm I'm going, oh, this is the the who made me a princess thing where they literally just aren't putting anything outside of the panels. It's literally just white surround like tons of white space and just panel block, panel block, panel block. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm, that means I'll, I'll be giving this a two because no attempt at flourish or unique style was made. But as they get to the end in the final season, they do start to add artistic flourish to it. They get better as it goes on. And sometimes they, sometimes when she remembers she knows how to use a sword, um, they do like little magic stuff. Yeah. So, I'd say it's like, it's a three for me. Uh, it's yeah. there. But I'm going to give it, like, a th this is the, uh, <laughs> as much, as much, uh, as I hate to do it, I'm, I'm giving it, I'm giving it a three. The, the best thing I think we can say about this series is that the art gets better over time. So good for them. Yes. All Was right. Drawn Personal written by the same mm -hmm. person. No, no. Um, oh yeah, I guess I skipped over that. So this is on Tappy Toon. There's actually three people involved here. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't say who did what, um, but Yu Zhongzhu, Miran Li, and USOI. That might be the group or whatever. Well, so whoever drew it, I don't have a big problem with you. Um, all right. Well, I don't think anybody has to guess what we put for personal preference. 
Yeah, it's a one. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't care for it. Had I stopped at the end of season two, I would have given it a two for personal preference. The, the, when the preferred ending is rocks fall and everyone dies, <laughs> um, you, you've, you've written poorly. Uh, yeah, right. So recommendation strength. I'm going to go with a two. I think I could recommend this to a niche audience of like criminal behavior analysts, um, sadists, uh, anyone who's just generally interested in cruelty, misery, and of course, people who enjoy mocking terrible comics. I'm giving it a one. I don't think anybody really? should read this. Uh Okay, well, then I'm giving it a one. I thought you were going to give me a hard time. Uh, no, you should give it a two. No, I mean, that was a joke. Like, I don't actually think anybody needs to, should read this. Like, <laughs> like I, I want to say, uh, this, this is a toughie for me. Because, like, obviously I read a lot of stuff. I watch a lot of horror. I watch a lot of things that people would say are, are probably not good for you. And I don't want to say you can't be like affected by the media you consume. It, it, like you can't, we, we always say like separate fiction from reality, but there will be the, a lot of people who say like, well, this particular story helped me get through a tough time or this story really changed how I think about something. Like this is the kind of story where it's like, this falls firmly in the, you're going to have to watch your brain when you read this one, like you don't want to surround yourself with this kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's not that it's not well written enough that I think it's going to like corrupt anybody. But like, if anybody reads this and they feel it like really scratching an itch, that's not good. And uh, again, I want to talk to these people. I, I honestly want to know how, someone what what is someone getting out of this that they're like this was an enjoyable experience for me i'm glad that i did it yeah the only way that i would say for anybody like you should read all of it is if they already started reading it if they got through season one i would say finish it i mean you're not gonna like it but finish it you know, but for, for anybody who's like, Hey, I was thinking about reading this. Is there anything in here that I would get anything out of? I would say, don't do it. Not would worth you say, it. would you say we have found the one you don't like? This is, I, I certainly don't like it. Okay. But the, the, the difficulty I have with these is like, I still read it and going into it, knowing nothing, I would have read the whole thing because reading through season one and two, there was enough there to keep me on board. So until the very end, you had hope. Yeah. But overall, you did not like what you read. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. Okay. Okay podcast's over i'm done i i did what i came to do <laughs> <laughs> i think but we we still gotta find the thing where i'm like i wouldn't at, have at read episode this. one you turn it off <laughs> right which is well, i mean we're trying to we're trying to find that with shona jumping the gun that's so. a that's a tougher problem for you because you have quite the compulsion like you have a collector's compulsion i think that's why that's the goal is we yeah. need to find what will break me <laughs> yeah All and right. like i said at, near the beginning of this episode get subscribed because on shonen Gump, jumping the gun we got awful close <laughs> that's good to hear all right uh that's a 20 for me yep solid two which is way less than what it's rated so good for us on uh, on the scale here, a two is horrible, yeah. and a one is appalling. It was appalling. <laughs> it certainly was in a lot of ways. 
<sighs> what we've just read is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever seen. At no point in its rambling, incoherent responses were they even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone who re- who has read this is now dumber for having done so. I award you no points and may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> for a second, I was worried you were reading a review of this podcast. <laughs> uh, oh, here's some reviews. Let's see. Um, this person dropped it. So they gave it. Looks like two stars started off very strong. Oh, uh, Nico. Kyo Konya. Ikone Kionia. Sorry that I'm butchering your name. I can't pronounce it. Started off very strong. Male lead sells the female lead into slavery, then finds her and buys her again when he becomes emperor. Feeling betrayed, the female lead refuses to know what happens. Him. Yeah, it's not. It plays out somewhat <laughs> realistically where she can't get over how badly he betrayed her and how obsessive and selfish he is. And how everyone around them has to deal with reuniting with the female lead after being told she was dead and taking care of an incompetent emperor. Then the author does a full ass pull and has a demon eat all the female leads resentment. So she (laughs) falls in love with the male lead. What the fuck? Indeed. You are exactly right. No, I, I think the Bato comments. Usually I, I I find that to be a, a hive of scum and villainy, but you know what? Even the Bato comments have a limit, and I respect it. Damien were... says, someone should add this to how to how not to write a story 101. Damien, you're not wrong. Oh, here we go. Uh, this person gave it 5 out of 10. I don't know how to grade this, to be honest. It's a masterpiece of bad manhwa. It's fantastic to hate read. Don't go into this thinking anything is good. Nothing is. I'm pretty sure that by writing this, the author went against the Geneva Convention. Con- the thing is, Con- no, though, no, 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 Wicks. It's not. It's not so bad. Like I would say that Wilderness Villainous is so bad. It's entertaining. Like that's the one that I think is just incompetent. This is darker than that. Oh, by far. Okay, I found one. This person gave it a nine. Okay. Frank Ormond. You you gotta you gotta come talk to us. This is unhinged. This is one of the better comics of this genre, but the commenters seem to hate it because of the male lead doing bad things when he was supposed to be bad. I mean, that's the story. That is a terrible take. I don't need to talk to this guy. <laughs> I Yeah, that's what I was going to say, is if you can minimize what he did, then you can like it. And that's the only way to, 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 get, it, to get through this, is to say that what he did is not unforgivable. And like you could say it's a comic book, whatever. You could forgive it. In the logic of the world, you could forgive it. But like... Yeah, if I, I feel like the more seriously you take this comic, the more you're either outing yourself as some kind of problem person or you're going to hate it. Star Whisperer, who gives it a six, says, y'all are overdramatic as F. First of all, she doesn't fall in love. Read the story again if you don't get it, girl. Toxic, yes. Story can sometimes seem like they pulled something out of nowhere, but clearly y'all are hard ASF to please. The first season was really good. (laughs) I even liked the ending. Just try it out. And if you don't like it, move on. No, I I will. Let me tell you what I'm going to do for every comment like that. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to try it out. And if I don't like it, I'm going to record a two and a half hour podcast complaining about it. <laughs> and well, if you don't like fair, that, we only spend an, uh, like an hour on this one. <laughs> and if you don't like that, 
then please walk away and do not rate my podcast. Um, <laughs> what I don't get about this, this, this particular review, it, she says, first of all, she doesn't fall in love. Read the story again. If you don't get it, I think you need to reread the ending because I was in the same position where I was going, Oh, she's not actually falling in love. She's just letting go of it. But no, she actually did. She did fall in love at the end or rather reignited her original love. So that's just a reading comprehension issue. Say it out loud gives it a seven. Honestly, this story zigs then zags and you will want to be done with it, but you'll carry on and it's worth it. I disagree. This might be the longest way around I've gone in a manhwa to get to the male lead and female lead being together. Who knows if it's even going to happen. THW author is throwing bombs left, right, and center. I don't think they finished it. Yeah, I don't think they finished it. <laughs> Eight. S- stay forever. Eight stars. This yeah, was a I'm bittersweet gonna... story. What? I was going to say, I'm going to be honest with you. The, the impression I'm getting from these comments is like, I actually don't want to talk to the people that like it. Well, let me, let me be fair. I sorted this on who gave it the best ratings, right? <laughs> Most people gave but it they, one star. So. They seem, they seem like weirdos. This was a bittersweet story that seemed more realistic than most webtoons. I'm happy with the ending. No, considering everything Bella went through for her to still make the choices she made just shows how strong she is. What? She didn't let her life trials break her. Uh, She remains strong, caring, and resolute while never becoming bitter. Disagree. She's one of the strongest female leads, both mentally and physically. Kiris has done so much damage that I don't know if it can fully be repaired. That's true. Betrayal is pretty hard to overcome, especially if you truly loved that person. Yes. At least he feels remorse and tries to earn her forgiveness through his actions, I suppose. I don't hate that. Doesn't... I don't hate that review because uh, it seems like they're focusing on the fact that she became empress. Yeah, um, which that's that would have been a good story if the guy wasn't in it, <laughs> right? Uh, but it it also seems like they're like she became empress, but maybe she hasn't fully forgiven him yet. Maybe that's their take, and if that's their take then I can see where they're coming from. I don't want me reading these comments to come off as like, I'm making fun of these people. I legitimately just don't understand. And like, I I'm, I'm struggling to have uh, put myself in a perspective where I can like, see where they're coming from. Um, I'm the last person who's going to tell someone that they shouldn't like something. I literally just, I want to understand it. I won't tell you that you shouldn't like it, but I may make fun of you for liking it. (laughs) You can do the same to me. I watch ghost adventures. If you tell me something like she doesn't fall in love, read the story again. I'm going to say, listen, you you obviously missed some really important stuff and you should reread it. Although you shouldn't reread it because it's, it's terrible at the end. So don't do that. But I feel like you missed some things. Um, But for the people who are legitimately like, Hey, I know all this bad stuff happens, but I I liked how this went. I just I'm I want to know. Okay, I think we're done with that. Oh, <laughs> uh, we got through it. I hope everybody goes and joins our Patreon because <laughs> we did all of this work for you. <laughs> And you know what? I hope everybody goes and I hope everybody goes and joins our Patreon because, as my co-host on the other podcast said, I don't want to do this for free. (laughs) (laughs) Um, you can go on our Patreon. You join at any tier, and you get to vote on what we read next. And because we spent so much time in this awful mess for this episode. Uh, the next episode is going to be in April, which 
is when my birthday is. And so for my birthday, I have picked three of my absolute favorites for us to cover. <laughs> um, so we're going to do It's Time to Change the Genre, I Shall Master This Family, or Not So Wicked Stepmom. All of those rated above 8.5. Um, I think I shall master this family is actually rated at like nine point something. Yeah, nine point four. That's the highest rated one, but uh, the other two are like eight point eight or something like that. Um. So yeah, you can go on our Patreon and vote, and we'll be okay with any of those because they're all really good. So we need a palate cleanser after this. Yep. Um, I don't think we're ever going to read anything this bad for this show ever again. Well, never say never. I would be surprised if we even get something as bad as Savor the Taste, which wasn't terrible. I, I think you said in the Discord, um, is we said, like, Savor the Taste shouldn't have been on this episode. No. But the thing is, is if it wasn't on this episode, I don't think it would have been on any episode. I probably would have read it, but I would never have been like, Ben, you should read this. <laughs> There's not a lot to talk about with it. It, it. it does belong on an episode of like multiple different things, but sure. Yeah. Yeah. If we, if we were ever to, to go like, here's a couple that aren't the best, but you can get through quickly and you know, it's good entertainment for an afternoon or something like that. All right. Well, thanks everybody for coming along on this journey with us. I, I hope you enjoyed it because I didn't <laughs> <laughs> No, Uh, it was, it was fine. Uh, it's, it's fun to get riled up sometimes. <laughs> That's all I do. Uh, so before we go, we want to thank Segoy Mart for partnering with us. Segoy Mart's a retailer of Japanese snacks, drinks, toys, and merch, and they got a lot of cool stuff you can't get outside Japan. Um, our listeners can check the link in the description or use code APR15 at checkout to get 15% off their first order. And of course, we want to hear from you, uh, which you can do on our social media. Um, and tell us what series you want us to cover. Please, no more really terrible ones. Um you can find all those social media links on our website, animepodcasterreincarnation.com, where you can also leave comments about these episodes and also find other posts and reviews. Uh, and as we mentioned, we got our Discord, so you can come chat with us there. Let us know what you think about these. Were we unfair to these series? We definitely weren't. We were very objective and scientific. So, uh, But you're welcome to come argue with us. Uh, and as I mentioned recently, check out our Patreon the, our supporters get perks like getting to vote on these episodes uh, or what series we're going to cover, um, as well as the high getting the high quality stereo version early. Um, and we'd love to hear what perks people want. Um, we're, we're very open to adding additional perks. Uh, we do have bonus episodes up there. So that's a, a perk that uh, I continue to fail to mention. Um, and also, I've been doing some streaming stuff on the Discord, which I haven't locked into the Patreon yet, so you can just come hang out. But uh, we may do something with that in the future where we might, you know, stream our recordings or something like that. And, of course, we want to shout out our patrons. So starting at the reincarnator tier we've got moon and cake dwarf and at our merchant tier we've got kill hour and at our commoner tier we've got rena so thank you so much to our patrons and of course don't forget to check out our regular podcast that time i got reincarnated in the same world as an anime podcaster we've also got shonen jumping the gun which is me and kermit uh checking out the first chapter of a manga and uh, commenting on that. And we actually started a new series, which is not going to be regular like these other ones, but um, sort of more one-off things called Baka Banashi, 
which is basically just recording us doing a lot of crazy stuff. <laughs> Our first episode of that, we had the uh, uh, David and Jordan from Shonen Flop on, and we discussed what uh, what movies are isekai or not. We had a lot of fun with them. And of course, if you can't get enough of Ben, you can check out his other podcast, Words About Books. Got anything fun going on right now? It's a Dune month. Cashing it in on already. the movie. Cashing oh, in on the right. movie. <laughs> yeah, you got to get that SEO. Right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> At some point, we're going to be reviewing the movie. I got to go see it. Mm. I, I still haven't. It only came out a couple days ago, right? Yeah. I, I got to get one of those uh, sandworm popcorn buckets. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Everybody says it's disgusting, but I say, you know what? That's Shai Halud. <laughs> Uh, and you uh, you put out a couple episodes of the the new Lord of the Rings series, right? Oh yeah, specifically. So we got yeah, we're going through the Hobbit chapter by chapter. If uh, people listen to it, we'll go through the Lord of the Rings chapter by chapter, trying to give um, like context and insight into the inspirations for it from like Norse myth and sagas and. Um, also trying to like put it in the context of the larger Tolkien legendarium without going like way too far, which is my temptation. That's what <laughs> my co-hosts there. Um, so yeah, uh, if you're into Lord of the Rings, check it out. I would well, say I've been if you, enjoying it. If you've ever thought about like getting into Lord of the Rings or something and you like Freerin, I think Freerin's actually doing it right. So it might be worth checking out if you if you're more into that. But well, uh, thanks again for listening. Um, we hope you had a good time. Like I said, we had fun with this, even if actually reading some of this stuff was not so much fun. But um, it's fun to talk about. So we hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, now, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go drown my sorrows in some good manga. Save for the taste like two weeks ago because I was mm-hmm. like, I need to make sure I get through all of this stuff because I can't be reading this. I can't read, you know, 70 chapters the day before. <laughs> um, and I read Save for the Taste and I was just like blowing through it. I was like, oh, this is good. I, I think yeah. I read the whole thing in like less than three days. And I was like, okay. And now I got plenty of time for On the Emperor's Lap. And I waited a couple of days and then I, I get into it and I'm reading On the Emperor's Lap and I'm going through like 20, 30 chapters. I was like, hmm, this isn't this isn't too bad. Yeah, I'm I'm there's something here to it. And I'm getting through it and I'm getting through it. And I'm like and then I get to like the middle of season two and I'm just like oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> It has fallen off its own edge. <laughs> you can make a joke about like, yeah, you, know, you should test your manhwa before you mainline it. You never <laughs> know when you're going to get. <laughs> you never know what they cut it with, you know. Make you sh- make sure you get your pure uncut manhwa. <laughs> yeah. You got to know what you're putting in your eye holes. <laughs>